Welcome back, everybody, to another Capture the Flag Pico CTF 2022 video. On uh, the last video, we spent a little bit too much time playing with the Veneer Cipher. We got to crack open Katana, a very, very old project of mine that uh, is still bad, still broken, still has plenty of bugs, but uh, could see how it might be able to use units or different modules to run um, and solve bare bones, basic, cheesy Capture the Flag challenges. Anyway, in this video, we're doing something different, so let's go do it. All right, I have my terminal open. I have the Kali Linux VM running, and I am in the web page for PicoCTF over on PicoCTF.org. And we have this reverse engineering category. This challenge is called bloat.py. Challenge description is simple. Can you get the flag? We want to run this Python program in the same directory as this encrypted flag. So let's go ahead and download these. I will move over into a reverse engineering directory that I already have made for us. It will create a directory called bloat.py for the specific challenge. And let's wget these files down. I'll grab the encrypted flag just as well. Wget that. And here they are both present in our current directory. Now we have a Python script and the data of the flag.tech that is encrypted or encoded or modified in some way. We assumingly have to do something with this Python script to do something different with what this thing does. Uh, let's open it up. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, okay. So... This doesn't make a whole lot of sense at first glance, but we can make sense of it in a strange way because we could basically take the pieces of these and see what the values are since we know what this A array or this list, the string in all reality is set up to do and create and make. Um, so we could probably sort of deobfuscate this, right? Or, or understand how it indexes all the different values as part of this A variable that's defined up top here. Um, let's do that with a couple of these functions and try to clean it up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually create a bloat flag.py. I'll call it modified bloat flag.py so I can keep track of the original and oh goodness B Python black wanted to make some of those changes. Uh, let me disable that uh, linter that I'm using. Black is the thing that is uh, actually using uh, and, and cleaning up all the Python code as I modify it and I don't want it to do that right now because I kind of want to do that manually. I'm going to make some white space just in between these uh, commands ran here and because I can tell this is a function with that def keyword argument and the opening colon uh, I can tell that it ends because we end up creating a new defined function after all of these so I'm just gonna try and clean these up uh, or just spread them out a little bit so we can make sense of what these functions might do uh, this is probably going to end up being okay, read open the flag, and that uh, we could probably rename this, and I'll use my find and replace functionality to do that. Um, that function will ultimately read the flag contents, because we can sell it, we see, oh, we open it up, and then we read it, just like that. Uh, so in which case, arg44 is the encrypted flag. So let's replace all the occurrences of that with control alt enter and this arg 432 is something that's going to end up getting the return value of arg 232 that returns our own input given a prompt um, let's try and figure out what all those strings that are passed in these functions might be again knowing okay we could use this a value to our advantage here i'm actually going to open up another terminal and use my own python interpreter where i could go ahead and say here's the value of a Great, now we've got that set up and used accessible for us within the interpreter. And let's copy and grab all the segments that are actually concatenating index values together. Uh, we could go ahead and just slap this in, and now we know what that string is supposed to be, and it's supposed to be happy chance for us. So let's paste that in. We'll do the very, very same for all these later renditions and kind of work through that iterative process to determine, okay, what are these strings supposed to refer to? Uh, we end up doing this with a couple others here. Just copying and pasting, grabbing the renditions, and letting Python figure this all out for us because it knows what the values really are. Uh, 
Let's go ahead and grab this input one just as well. Please enter the correct password for the flag. I'm gonna assume we can enter that there. Uh, and arg112, another function, does the same tactic. Let's go ahead and slap this all in. It says, welcome back your flag, user. And it would probably re display the flag for us. Uh, here, let's enter that. Let's rename that to uh, prepare flag. And what is arg13, what is arg432? that sets based off of our input here. So we'll call that ask for password, control enter to replace those. And we know that the return value of that is going to be what we entered on our keyboard, right? That is our input. That's passed into arg133, which checks if our input is, okay, happy chance. And that would tell us the password is right or wrong. If it were, we're not equal to happy chance. And if it were incorrect, it would exit. So we could call this check if password is, or I guess check if input is happy chance. And then if it is, then we would not have exited and we would go ahead and prepare the flag. In which case this arg432 value is gonna be returned from arg111. That's going to seemingly run this function, which decrypts the given input with a key, right? Let's, let's call that variable arg423 a key. And this function will be decrypt flag. How about that? Yeah, that seems to make sense. This is like a basic XOR, um, given what this uh, caret symbol is. That is a bitwise XOR. And they're extending, hey, the length of our uh, key value to be the same length as the given input. So that's all it's really doing. This is going to end up probably like retrieving flag. We'll call that retrieve flag. And with that, it prints it out. Or is our key now going to be the flag? Meh. I guess that is maybe just clobbered together. Anyway, we know how this program works now. And it's just simply asking, is our input going to be happy chance? And then it, if it is, it'll XOR the encrypted flag with Rapscallion. Yeah? Let's try it. Let's play with the, this, this original program rather than our modified one. Let's go ahead and run our bloat flag.py file. We know that we need to enter the password happy chance and there we go welcome back your flag user is <laughs> pico ctf deobfuscation for the win and that is how we can get the flag by deobfuscating that obfuscated binary where a lot of the code was kind of hidden or mangled or represented in a different way to be more confusing for us as an analyst or reverse engineer right uh, hey, let's make a super simple uh, get flag script for that by just entering the command that we need. Uh, we know it is happy chance that we can pass to this and that will spit out the flag for us. And then we could go ahead and grep out that flag format as we have always done with grep color equals none. And with that, we can save the flag and finish that challenge. Now we can grab this and go ahead and submit it on the scoreboard and we can be done with the bloat.py challenge. Nice, good enough, pretty easy. That one was a good one. Really just kind of taking advantage of how Python, being a scripting language, we could make sense of how it all works and we could piecemeal whatever code that we wanted to run on our own. And that way we could let it unravel and determine what all of these variables, while they are standalone, just index pieces of the string, how do they look like when they're actually all evaluated and then concatenated together? That's how we could do that. With a couple iterative process, right? We maybe did some of that by hand manually. Maybe in the future we could write a script to figure that stuff out. But hey, it wasn't too hard for something as small like this. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got some new learning out of it, some new exposure to maybe a different technique, maybe a different thing you could do. Just knowing, you know, let the language unravel things for you. 
That's a really good tactic for deobfuscation with scripting languages. But if you did like this video, please do all those YouTube... You, uh, goodness, YouTube algorithm things. I can talk, I promise. <laughs> like the video, comment, subscribe, you know, anything. If, if just how we keep it real when we're doing these outros together. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Take care.